This tutorial demonstrates how to create a floor plan in Live Interior 3D. The first thing you need to do before creating a floor plan is to set the scale and measurement units for the given project. You can do that by clicking on the square with the measurement abbreviation between the two rulers. I'll use feet. To proceed to the project scale, click on the project settings. Let's leave the scale alone for now. In this panel, you can also change the story height settings. Click on the canvas to return to the workspace. To bring up the drawing tools, click the tools button in the app bar. The main tools that you will use to draw your floor plan are the room and wall tools. The room tool adds a rectangular room, while the wall tool lets you draw walls individually. By default, tools will remain activated permanently. To deactivate one, choose the Select tool or just press the Escape key. You can use the Room tool to create the majority of your floor plan. When you draw, the cursor snaps to walls in your project. When you drag a corner of the room, you can see its dimensions. The program displays dashed guidelines that will help you align a new wall to an existing one. When you add a new room, make sure that its wall overlaps exactly with an existing wall. You can align walls and other objects using the guidelines. To add one, place the cursor over the vertical or horizontal ruler. Then click and drag a guide to the canvas. In the context menu, you can choose to delete, hide, or lock the guideline. The information bar, which is above the horizontal ruler, displays the exact coordinate of the selected guideline. As soon as you select another object, the information bar displays its name and properties. For example, you can find out the dimensions, angle, and area of a wall. You can consider a room as a solid object. Once you click on a wall, the whole room will be selected. You can drag it out of the floor plan. Also, you can resize a room by dragging one of its walls and corners. When you move a separate room towards your floor plan, it builds onto the floor plan. If you need to select a single wall, the first click on this wall may select a room. Click a second time to have only one wall selected. To be able to select a room by clicking on a wall again, deselect all of them. The Wall tool is useful when you need to draw walls at an oblique angle, or when the end of the wall is not connected to any other wall. To draw a wall, place the cursor over the area where you want the wall to begin. Then click and drag to begin drawing a wall. Clicking once creates a corner, allowing you to draw a new wall in a different direction. As you can see, the program displays the wall length while you are drawing. To stop drawing, just double-click on the endpoint. It's important to understand how the wall tool works when you create corners. The end of the first wall segment defines an internal room corner. So when you draw individual walls, you should always try to outline the room. From this perspective, if you want to align the walls to the guidelines, the guidelines should show the outline of the room floor, not just the wall axes. While you are working in 2D, your project is simultaneously being built in the 3D mode. You can switch to the 3D view at any time. Please note that you should not create gaps for doors and windows when drawing the walls, as creating an enclosed area automatically creates ceilings and floors and displays area measurements for each room. To add a door or window, you need to click on the Objects button and drag an object to your floor plan. Let's add a door. You can see that it snaps to the wall and, if necessary, rotates automatically. A doorway is created automatically. If we move the door in 3D, 
the doorway updates instantly. When you drag a door in 2D, the program displays the distances to the nearest walls. A door in your project may open inside or outside of the room, and also may open to the left or right. If a library door doesn't match these requirements, you can alter the object. Right-click on the door and select Type and Representation. Go to the 2D settings, which affect only the floor plan. Vertical flipping lets you make the door open inside or outside. To choose whether the door handle is to the left or right, flip horizontally. Once the door looks correctly on the floor plan, check to see if the door handle is on the correct side in the 3D view. If it isn't, click on the Flip Horizontally button in the 3D section. Let's return to the floor plan. The properties of objects in your project can be adjusted in the inspector. To open it, click on the Inspector button in the app bar. Here you can set the thickness of one or several walls. Also, you can change the length of a single wall or of several parallel walls. Another way to change the room size is to drag walls on the floor plan. The walls, which are changing their length, will display their dimensions. The program lets you choose either Story Wall or Loft Wall type in the inspector. Loft walls are usually used to create lofts. Story walls are used for floors with no roof. More details on this can be found in the program's help. There are several more tools which are used to draw custom floors and ceilings. We have learned that floors and ceilings are created automatically when you draw a room. The floor and ceiling tools let you create an area on an automatic floor or ceiling with different properties. These tools operate the same way. To create a custom floor, select the Floor tool and click on the floor plan several times to add all but one corner. Then double-click to specify the location of the last corner and finish drawing. To change the shape of custom floors and ceilings, you can move contour points using the Selection tool. Also, you can add and remove contour points using commands from the context menu. We need to open the 3D view to see how we can use a custom floor. If you apply a suitable material to it, you can create an area rug. Increasing the elevation parameter in the inspector turns the floor into a podium. In the same way, you can work with ceilings. Each room displays the area measurement. You can add comments by double-clicking on them and typing what you need into the text editing box in the inspector. For example, you can indicate room names. The dimension tool measures the distance between two points and displays it on the 2D plan. The annotation tool basically creates a text box for custom comments. As before, you can edit text and change its font and formatting in the inspector. You also have the option of filling the rooms, walls, and other building elements on the 2D plan with a color or pattern in the Drawing tab of the inspector. Your building can have several stories. The Building tab of the inspector lets you control stories and roofs. You can add stories above or below the current one. Let's add an upper story. By default, the new story has the same exterior walls as the first. This can easily be changed by moving and resizing the walls, or you can delete all these walls at once by hitting the Delete key as long as all of them remain selected. To display the floor plan of a particular story, simply click on its preview in the inspector. You can also make any story the ground floor. All stories below will become part of the basement. Deleting a story is as simple as selecting the preview and clicking the minus button. Adding roofs is as easy as adding stories. In the inspector, 
You have the choice to add a roof on the current floor or above it. Let's select the second option. You can notice that a new story was created, and then the program brought us to the roof assistant. In the assistant, you need to select one of the roof templates, and if necessary, rotate the roof. Below the preview, you can change the soffit type. The preview lets you choose different points of view. Just grab and drag the 3D view to rotate it. In order to zoom in or out, use the mouse wheel. To quickly return to the front view, simply double-click on the preview. Click OK to actually add the roof. The roof we have added is called Auto Roof. This means that the program defines its outline on the floor plan according to the external walls. Using the Roof tool from the toolbar, you can draw a custom roof outline. This is very similar to using the Room tool. Once the contour is created, the Roof Assistant opens up, and your further steps are the same as when you created an auto roof. Later, you can modify the custom roof outline by moving, adding, or deleting the contour points, as we did with the custom floor. Once the floor plan is complete, you can always review it using the Pan and Zoom tools. The Zoom In and Zoom Out buttons are located at the left side of the screen. The button above them lets you choose a predefined scale or fit your drawing to the screen. The Pan tool is located in the toolbar. Use Zoom tool in the toolbar to quickly fit the selected part of the floor plan to the screen. Drawing the floor plan requires certain accuracy. To draw or move objects more precisely, zoom in as much as possible. To scroll the view, use the Pan tool in the toolbar or press the Control key together with an arrow. The mouse wheel scrolls the floor plan vertically. While you are drawing with the room, wall, or other tools, you can press the Space key to temporarily activate the Pan tool. Then scroll the 2D view and release the key to continue drawing. This is useful when your floor plan is bigger than the screen. On a computer with a touch screen, you can scroll and zoom using standard gestures. When you select objects, such as walls, floors, and ceilings with your finger, they display bigger handles to make your work more comfortable. That's it for working in 2D. Let's finish this tutorial now. Refer to the documentation of Live Interior 3D. I'll see you next time.